Hi everyone, today we're going to review another full coverage foundation. We're looking at the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. I've never tried this product, so I'm really excited to give it a go. And we are gonna see how it wears when it's first put on till the end of the day. Let's go. Okay, so today we're going to review a new foundation that I've never tried before. I'm really excited to try this. I've tried some of our other products and I wasn't really impressed yet, but I've heard really good things about this, so I'm really ready to give this a go and test it out so you can see what it looks like when you first put it on and how it wears hours into the day. All right, so we're going to start by put your hair up. We don't wanna get any of this stuff inside your hair. Long wear foundation tends to be very sticky and hard to remove. Just the stuff that I tried out yesterday, I had to use an oil-based makeup remover four times to get it all off. So pick your hair up, don't get it in your hair. It's like a childproof box. All right, we got it open. Cute little bottle, I like it. Let's see how the dispenser is, it's good. I like this kind of dispenser, it keeps bacteria out. Pump is great. This is kind of why I like pump and liquid foundations more than I like pancake foundations, because imagine, pancake foundations, you're touching, it's open to the air, and you're definitely using a sponge to get it, which just shoves bacteria into that. All right, we're gonna start by applying it. I find that long wear foundation and full coverage foundation you wanna get it on as quickly as possible and in one fell swoop. This Fenty foundation feels a bit watery, so I'm curious to know how this coverage is gonna come out. It is going on a bit chalky, very liquidy, nice feel. Once you spread it, it doesn't feel moisturizing, which is okay, especially if you're in humid climates or you tend to have oily skin this might be a good pick for you. It has kind of a powdery finish. So I don't know if you've seen some of the other videos, but this week I've been battling some little patches of eczema. So you're gonna see the eczema patches really suck in the foundation. So they're gonna look a little chalkier around where I have the eczema. That's over here near my forehead right here and my eye right here. My birthmark tends to make me very prone to eczema. I'm about done applying this layer of coverage. I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of how this feels. It's a very lightweight foundation and it has pretty decent coverage for how liquidy the, ba the foundation was, but it's really powdery. It almost finishes The color is slightly lighter than I would have thought from how it was represented in my hand and in the bottle. I have a yellow undertone, so I pick yellow-esque undertones inside of my foundation. Some of you will have orange or red or pink undertones. So, but I do, I have yellow because of my Asian skin, olive skin. And this is a little lighter than how it represents. Now, you always wanna pick a foundation that's lighter than your skin, but you never wanna pick a foundation that's lighter <laughs> than you thought it was gonna be. <laughs> so you can kinda of see where my butterfly uh, birthmark is. I'm, I call it a butterfly, but it's a bilateral facial birthmark. So it's here. I can see it defined in my cheeks, and definitely I see the spot here and here, but it did cover very well. But I'm not a big fan of this finish so far. Let's clean off our hands and we're gonna start on the powder layer. So with full coverage foundation, it's really important to take note how your base takes the rest of your makeup routine. So for me, I have a full coverage pressed powder, bronzer, blush, and eyeshadow that needs to go on top of this. And so you wanna know how it feels. Right now, my skin feels more dry than it normally would right after I put my base on. So I'm not very fond of that, but this is the Studio Fix Full Coverage Press Powder by MAC. I like this. 
powder. I've been using it for years. Um, I highly recommend. If you have oily skin, um, or you tend to get, you know, a lot of sebum or acne, this may be a good choice for you if you do have that oily texture and issues with your skin. This foundation may be great for you. The powder is taking nicely to the foundation. It's sticking, it's giving me that extra layer of coverage, which is nice. I will say that although it is taking to the foundation well and staying in place, it looks a little more powdery and chalky than I would have liked. So again, I, I think I'd go for myself a more moisturizing foundation. I tend to have combination skin, so I do get a little shiny around my nose, but it's not a lot. So I tend to go for more moisture than not and then just blot my nose during the day. The number one rule with full coverage foundation, don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. Never touch your face. Okay, so we were done with the foundation. We've applied our pressed powder. Now we're gonna do that step where we take off the powder on our eyebrows. Okay, so now that we've got um, the base of the foundation on and we've put our pressed powder on, the full coverage MAC Studio Fix, I'm gonna apply my bronzer. The bronzer of choice that I use is the Guerlain Terracotta line. I love this line. Um, I'll promote it till the cows come home. For me, bronzer's about adding color back in because we have this flat palette because we just applied foundation all over. I'm looking for something natural and soft. I don't want to look super made up. Kind of see like just adding that how much more natural um, my face looks just by adding a little bit of that color back in. So the eyeshadows we're going to use today is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. I like this because it's missing that one really toxic ingredient that you find in a lot of fabulous eyeshadows that I used to use a lot. Um, it's called Bismuth Oxychloride. So this palette is Bismuth Oxychloride free, which I like. Funny thing is, um, you know, some days we give our face a break from makeup so it can breathe and I love those days too, but my eczema tends to flare up when I'm not wearing makeup. And I think it's because it's exposed to the elements. So it's getting more of those allergens, I think. I don't know, but it tends to feel better when I have makeup on. All right, I just put on the color Ounce as my base and now I'm gonna do the Cayenne for my contour. This I'm just gonna touch right in the corner. You guys aren't seeing this, but every time that I change color on my fingers, I'm either using another, a different finger that's clean, or I get up and I go wash my hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face with dirty hands. Okay. All right, let's get some eyebrows on. This is the Anastasia Brow Wiz pencil. It's the two-sided pencil. It has a little brush on one side and the pencil that telescopes up and down like a lipstick. Now that my eyebrows are on, I'm gonna apply a little bit of mascara to the top and bottom. This is the Guerlain Mad Eyes Mascara. I like it a lot. Okay, so right now I have eyebrow pencil, eyeshadow, a little bit of mascara, a little lip gloss, and bronzer on. Now I'm gonna show you a blush. I'm trying out different blushes right now because I'm trying to find ones that don't have bismuth oxychloride in them. Um, and this one today that we're gonna try is the Laura Mercier. This is the Strawberry uh, Color Infusion Blush. It's called Blush Infusion by Laura Mercier. This is a new formulation from the last time I tried her, so 
This is an adventure for you and me today. <laughs> this color's called Strawberry. I thought it was poetic since a lot of the time the small hemangiomas, um, which are also port wine stains, they call them strawberry birthmarks. So we're using strawberry blush today. This is a very fine powder of blush. It's a little innocent looking, it's a little fresh. So I might choose a deeper color um, for me, but if you have skin that's slightly lighter than me, I think this might be a great color. So the foundation's doing good. The Fenty Longwear Foundation, it's called Pro Filter Soft Matte. It's doing good, but I do feel chalky. So I'm gonna end this makeup application with a little bit of moisture spray. This one's the Clinique Moisture Surge Spray. Just get that to set in. So now that this makeup is fully applied and I'm ready to start my day, my first impression is that it's a little chalky and there could be a little more coverage. There's coverage that I'm lacking with this foundation. So although it did cover my birthmark quite well, other foundations out there will give you more full coverage, at least with my skin tone and texture. Now, your face throughout the day, the pores open up and your oils, your natural oils come out. So your makeup will mix with that and you'll be able to see how the makeup mixes with your skin chemistry. All right, guys, we're gonna see how this baby works all day. I'll give you an update. And at the end of this video, you're gonna see what it looks like at the very end of the day on how this Fenty Longwear Foundation actually wore. Okay, guys, so it's the end of the day. I've spent a full eight hours in the Fenty Soft Matte Pro Filter Longwear Foundation. And I must say, it is not my favorite. I think it was chalky, it was a little dry, had a powdery finish, and at the end of the day, I could see my pores and I still got oily in the same areas that I get oily with more moisturizing foundations with better coverage. So I would say that if you're in the market for a medium coverage and you like that powdery finish, Fenty might be something you would check out. If you're looking for full coverage, this is not the foundation for you and there are other things on the market that will suit your needs better. Sorry, Fenty. If you like this video and you found it helpful and you wanna see more unbiased, truthful reviews about full coverage makeup and other products, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also hit the little bell at the bottom and it'll give you notifications when we upload new content that has to do with birthmarks, you and me. Also, if you are interested, we have launched a new site called birthmark.com. It has tips, educational posts, as well as product recommendations that are helpful for people just like you and me.